It's BD. So last Q and A, I talked about expansive clamping and hypoxic clamping. This video, I'm going to go into it a little bit more detail. But before I get into it, in the description below, you will find BD's big book of length. It is essentially everything I have learned in the past year about semi-therapeutic penis elongation. I took research studies on physiotherapy to make penis enlargement more effective and more importantly, safer while taking less time. So if you're having issues following along on the Reddit or YouTube, it's definitely up your alley. One other thing, and I normally don't do this, I actually probably pin his channel more than mine, but Hank is slowly catching up to me and subscribers, and I cannot let that happen for my own ego's sake. So please like and subscribe if you like my content. Now that's out of the way. Let's get down to business. <laughs> Clear up a misconception. We have hard clamping, and then we have soft clamping. Hard clamping uses a hard plastic, or even metal, I wouldn't recommend it obviously, to apply the stint. Meanwhile, soft clamping uses soft rubber, so silicone sleeves or cock rings, to produce the stint. Then we have different methodologies. So we have expansive clamping, which is more old school. And then we have hypoxic clamping, it's which I have been teaching for the past six months or so. Different methodologies for different reasonings. I'm going to explain them here going forward. But at the end of the day, hard clamping and soft clamping, just describe the tool that you're using to apply the clamp. A lot of these old school techniques are based off of Priya Prism. And if we break down what pre-prism is, it is just an extended erection that causes fatigue to the endothelial tissue and hypoxic stress to the endothelial tissue. And then since we're constantly engorged, we start to break down the tunica albuginea. So my argument is, is we should not be trying to mimic pre-prism directly. And that's why so many of these guys are saying, oh, you need to clamp for one to two hours. I think we should take what causes pre-prism to grow, isolate it so that way we can minimize risk of injury. So that's why I think we need, or that's why I recommend we isolate expansive work and hypoxic work into very efficient sets and rep protocols so that way we know exactly how much work we need and that way we can mimic the benefits of pre-prism safely in isolation. And I've just noticed that it's just much faster results this way and more efficient. So. Hear me out for the rest of this video on why I think you need to do expansive clamping this way and hypoxic clamping this way. So let's explain expansive clamping. Most of you guys already know what that is. If you've done PE for the past five to 10 years at some point, that's where you put your clamp on, wear it for about five to 10 minutes, take it off, repeat for the allotted amount of time. The perceived benefits is since it's internal pressure the penis is working against itself and that's how it's creating the changes in the shape of the tunica but that issue is or the issue is with a hard clamp particularly sorry but the issue is particularly with a hard clamp is that it's hard to get the right amount of pressure build up inside the tunica albuginea to cause it to start to deform this has been improved with soft clamping in my opinion but a lot of people still get games with hard clamps <laughs> Now the focus with expansive clamping is many sets to achieve more and more expansion per set. This follows the kind of the same idea of my length or interval length protocol. The more sets you do, the more fatigued the tissue becomes, the easier it is to exert pressure against. So with expansive clamping, you're going to want to do many sets, about five minutes long. This is what M9 on a jump for you recommends to begin with then you typically want to take three to five minutes off between sets and this is when it becomes very taxing because it's three to five minutes of downtime so you don't have any hypoxic buildup during this time so the benefits is tunica remodeling because you're actually exerting pressure and you're actually going to get into the strain rate needed to see changes and i'll touch more on that at the end of this video with my recommendations less discoloration because you're not going to be as hypoxic but that varies individual to individual, depending on your own pressure tolerance, you can still get some pretty nasty discoloration from it. <laughs> and it's more practiced. So there's just more anecdotal evidence if you care about that for its type of results. Now the cons is first, it's hard to get right. 
and I already touched on this a bit, but with practice, you can figure it out pretty easily. And I keep looking at the little screen beside my camera, so give me one second. Hello, I'm actually looking at you now. And with expansive clamping, it is redundant to pumping. So pumping remolds tunica at a more efficient rate with external pressure. If you have both internal or expansive clamping and pumping, in my opinion, it's gonna be exceptionally redundant. And then with hard clamping in particular, I have noticed more pelvic floor issues than with soft clamping for expansive clamping, but that's going to depend on individual and individual and how, what else you're doing along with clamping. Now let's talk a bit about hypoxic clamping. Hypoxic clamping is something I coined this year. Essentially, the theory is, is since we're doing most of our work for remodeling the tunica with pumping and tunica release methods, we want to maximize the hypoxic stimulant. And the hypoxic stimulant is what's going to cause a significant increase in blood holding tissue density, which is what's actually going to fill out your new found bigger erections. So what we're going to do is mimic blood flow restriction therapy practices. And that means we only need to apply a stent for about 10 minutes, two to three times a week to see significant progress in endothelial density and nerve sensitivity. We're maximizing the angiogenic effects, therefore increasing erection quality faster than just with expansive clamping. I'm just looking at my notes, I haven't figured that out yet. There is less risk of injury because there's a lot less off and on and there's a lot less just time under pressure. Now, here are some of the cons though. It does not remodel the tunica whatsoever. You're not going to get any changes in collagen fibrils based off of only 10 minutes of under pressure. This is going to cause discoloration. It really just depends on how sensitive you are to discoloration. And it can cause nerve damage if you go longer than 20 minutes in a session without taking the stint off. Now, obviously I only recommend 10 minutes max for hypoxic clamping, but there are some research studies that show static BFR therapy. So let's say someone is bedridden they put stints around their legs for upwards of 20 to 30 minutes, and that actually shows a significant increase in nerve health and endothelial density in the legs. So there is a bit of wiggle room to see what is possible with clamping, but I think since we're dealing with such a sensitive area, we should err on the side of caution and only do 10 minutes worth of hypoxia. Additionally, I saw a study that said the hypoxic benefit of a stint or the angiogenic benefits of a stint rather peak at 10 minutes and after 20 minutes all the hypoxic benefits are eaten up by the negative waste of hypoxic events so keep that in mind 10 minutes is probably going to be the sweet spot no matter what the last con is that this is a relatively new idea founded by a meathead with no scientific backing but <laughs> <laughs> or scientific accreditations but you know I think that there's enough of you guys to know that I do take my time to like thoroughly vet my theories before I speak about them so let's get into recommendations if you can get a pump get a pump for remodeling the tunica this is what's going to lead to the best results in my opinion when it comes to actually changing the size of the tunica albuginia, in turn changing the size of your maximum erection. Expansive clamping is the same idea, just worse, in my opinion, just because you can't control the pressure and you're beholden to your own natural erection quality and how well your penis can hold blood at higher pressures. So without the aid of a mechanical device pulling more blood in, you're beholden to your own heart's capability. So if you're not very healthy, you're gonna have a harder time getting the correct pressure in. But that does not mean expansive clamping will not work. There's tons of evidence that it does anecdotally, but you need to do specific things. And this is gonna be my take on expansive clamping. If you want like the older school methods, check out Thunder Place and a joke for you. I particularly don't recommend them for a few reasons and I'll touch on it in a bit, but keep that in mind if you're looking for the tried and true method. First, bit of background, to show that we reach proper fatigue of the collagen fibrils, particularly 
in the surrounding direction, we need to be four to or four to six percent girthier while in the clamp at the end of our session. So immediately after you apply the first set's clamp, measure the girth, multiply it by 1.04, and then that's going to be your target girth for the end of the session. So let's say you're about five inches mid shaft at the start of your session. That means when you hit between 5.2 and 5.3 inches mid shaft, take the clamp off, you've done enough work. There is room to play around with the set periods. You could do a lot of sets at the beginning, but that seems like a pain in the ass. Or you can just do the traditional method, which is what I'm recommending right now. Five sets or five minutes on, three minutes off, repeat until you hit the target expansion. Now, this is where it can become much more time consuming because if you rush through and do all the sets all at once, you're gonna start building up a lot of hypoxic um, blood. That's not necessarily conducive for gains in this um, style. So you gotta take these breaks and that's when it really can become time consuming. So let's say it's eight minutes per set. You do five sets, that's already 40 minutes. A lot of the old guys say you need at least like one hour of work to do with expansive clamping to see results. I don't think that's true, but keep that in mind. And then on the off days, you're actually gonna to wanna to do hypoxic clamping one set, 10 minutes. So that way you get the hypoxic benefits while you still get the tunica remodeling benefits of. And before any girth routine or length routine, I highly recommend five to 10 minutes of tunica release. And I said this in my Q and A, but if you're a runner and you don't stretch before you run, you're gonna have <laughs> a much worse run in general because you're gonna be stiff and sore. This is the same idea. If you want a good workout, you have to warm up. This is going to speed up results significantly in my opinion. Now, if you have a pump, what I recommend is doing interval pumping until you hit the target expansion. So that's gonna take 20 to 30 minutes typically. And then either after your session, you do 10 minutes of hypoxic clamping every other session so you'd only end up doing it two to three times a week or you do hypoxic clamping on your off days that's because i've designed interval pumping to be the least stressful on your penis in general so we're only focusing on collagen fibril expansion and fatigue here so no hypoxic damage but we do need the hypoxic benefits so that's why we need to add it on and then a few other things there is a relatively heated debate about masturbation while clamping. I used to be like, it's okay, but I've come to realize that I actually also developed some form of pelvic floor strain while doing masturbated clamping. I already have very strong pelvic floor muscles. So for me, it would just that they've been so fatigued afterwards that I would have frequent urination. This is a mild pelvic floor strain. A lot of guys, sometimes the first time they clamp, they develop hard flaccid for three to four months. So take it slow. I really don't think you need to masturbate while you're clamping. If you have to, to keep the expansion, you're not using the proper tool for your penis. With hypoxic clamping for the past six months, I am yet to need to <laughs> fluff up while wearing the clamp, okay? so. That's why I recommend um, skipping with cock rings because it will fit your penis much better than a piece of plastic that has very little give in any direction. Now I touched on this already, but a lot of old heads think that you need one to two hours of clamping total to see gains. Now, in my experience, you should be able to hit the target expansion range within 30 to 40 minutes of work so that's going to be what half to a quarter of what the old school recommends now i get it i am based off of mostly scientific speculation at this point but I hate to toot my own horn but i've been right about a lot of things this past year so take it slow if i'm wrong worst case is you just have to add more sets personally when i did that much work my flaccid started to get stiff and that's a sign of one a bit of fibrosis being built up and two that my 
Tunica Albuginia was not responding the way I wanted it to. Because if we're trying to build a bigger penis, we want their penis to be very healthy so the tissue grows in very healthy. If it's tired, taggered, and stiff, that's a good sign that there is not enough recovery in your routine currently to allow for a full, robust healing response to cause the changes that we want. So you really need to learn about your own body to pull this off, right? And there is also a reason why I have been limiting my routines to like uh, less than 40 minutes per target because I think so many people have been doing it or overdoing it rather for the past 20 to 30 years. And I'm trying to flip the script on that. That is what's going to cause injury, overdoing it, not PE itself. Okay, so that was a lot to take in. So think about it first before you switch up to whatever I am telling you to do. But what I think this needs a little bit more um, trial and error. So if any of you guys are clampers, give my routine a shot. Make sure you do the tunica release and stuff beforehand. Track your before and after mid shaft clamped girth to be your metric for progress and you know uh proper routine workload and let me know on the reddit r slash getting bigger so that wraps us up guys do me a solid like and subscribe check out my book in the description below it i put a lot of effort into it i know a lot of guys will benefit from it so am i <laughs> so do me a solid do yourself a solid check it out if you're interested um as for the girth book i am slowly working on it but I've been swamped with other business responsibilities to actually work on it hardcore. I'm hoping to get it out by the end of the month, but again, no promises here. This is BD signing off.